Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome one more time. Welcome. Uh, we want to thank the Lord for each and every one uh, that's signing in right now. Uh, we welcome you to Zion Temple Apostolic Faith Church's Sunday School lesson. Um, I will be your host on this evening. My name is Brother Bill Eldridge. Um, I happen to be the superintendent over this lovely Sunday school. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the Lord for just allowing us this opportunity to come into your private spaces. Uh, also thank our pastor um, for giving us the platform to still continue to bring the Sunday school lessons, which is the word of God, into your homes in another way and with this platform. So we thank you each and every one again as you're signing in. Come on in. Join us. Uh, hopefully you came with expectation. You came looking for uh, a high time in the Lord. Um, definitely a bit excited on this evening. We're going to ask that the Lord will help to calm us a bit so that we can get through this lesson um, and try to stay on task. But such, such, such a good word on this evening, a very timely word on this evening that just lines up uh, ever so perfectly with uh, our, our consecration month coming to a conclusion. And, and, and boy, have we not had a time this month. Amen. Um, before we get going too far, we do want to open up with the word of prayer, um, trying to let everyone have a minute or two um, to get signed in to join us. Come on in. By all means, get comfortable, uh, get situated, get your Sunday school books out. Amen. Those of you who have the Sunday school books, get your Sunday school books out. Uh, get your Bibles ready. Amen. We are in this week. We are in lesson nine. Lesson nine. All right. As we're getting situated, we're going to go ahead and seek the Lord um, and go before the Lord in prayer that we might get started officially. Amen. Ooh, Heavenly Father, my God, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, my God, for you are great. My God, hallelujah, how you just continue to show yourself strong, mighty, Lord, my God, full of mercy, Lord, my God. We thank you, Lord, my God, for how you have led us uh, through these past several weeks, my God, how you've ministered to our hearts and our minds, Lord, and our spirits, Father, how you continue, Lord, to just feed us, my God. God, this rich word, Lord, my God, hallelujah, uh, that never goes out of style, never gets old, never expires, my God. Oh, but it's still alive, my God, even now, bringing forth the change that you have desired many years ago, Lord. We thank you, Father, for looking down on us, Lord. We thank you for being in our presence even right now, Lord. We thank you, Lord, my God, hallelujah, for it doesn't matter how far we may be apart physically, Lord. We know that you are in each and every home, my God. We thank you, Lord, my God, for reaching out, Lord, my God, and touching us all where we are right now. We thank you, Lord, my God, for this word on tonight, Father, my God. Hallelujah. Oh, how you've given us, my God, a meal, Lord, my God, that will fill us, Lord, that will satisfy us, Lord, that will correct us, Lord, and even bring change, my God. Hallelujah. That we ever get so closer to you. We're asking you, Lord, to touch each and every person, Lord, that is signing in, Lord, that will be watching with us and partaking with us on tonight. We're asking you, Lord, to even touch those, my God, that will watch the recording later, Father, my God. Hallelujah. Because we know you're just that type of God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, my God, for the platform, Lord, that we are here able to come together, Lord, in this way, my God, to reach out, Lord, and to communicate your word with one another. Father, we thank you, Lord, my God, for how you just led us and kept us, Lord, my God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for Zion. Hallelujah. My God and our pastor, Lord, our first lady. Father, we ask you to continue to cover them and keep them, Lord, my God. Continue to uh, charge them, Lord, my God, in the direction, Lord, that you would have them to lead your people, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the ministries of Zion, Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, this, this essential crew 
Lord, my God, that has risen up, Lord, my God, and accepted the challenge and the task, Lord, my God, to still serve you in this new way, Lord. We're asking you to touch them, Lord, uh, encourage them, Lord, my God, that we might continue to go forward, my God, how you would have us to go, Lord. We know, Lord, that even in these times, Lord, my God, that we have a job to do. We have a calling, Father, my God. Father, your word will still go forth, my God. Souls need to be touched, my God. Souls need to be saved, Lord. Hallelujah. Use us, Lord, how you see fit. Take charge, Lord, over our mind and our heart, Lord, even our mouth, my God, that every word that is spoken, Lord, my God, is acceptable in thy sight, Lord, my God. We praise you, Lord, for all that you've done, Lord. We honor you, Lord, for what you're doing in us right now, my God, and we give your name the glory, Father, in all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, we thank you, Lord. We thank everybody uh, who is joining us, Lord. We are asking again that everybody will participate, um, get into the comment section Lord, with your questions and your comments. Um, we're trying to do our best to, to recreate the environment that we had when we were here um, on Sunday mornings. Uh, we, we tried as a staff to not come before you with lecture. We tried to come before you with conversation that this will be a back and forth on a two way street. And, and that's obviously, excuse me, uh, seen some changes due to the current circumstances and conditions. But but right now you're sitting there looking on seeing me on your device and I can see the comments coming in right now. Praise the Lord, Sister Cheryl. Praise the Lord, Sister Gwen. Praise the Lord, Brother Swope. Amen. And all of those that are still signing in, I, forgive me if I if I miss some. The screen is still rolling as we're as we're going forward. But I want to try to keep up with you guys. We're going to try to have this back and forth conversation as best we can. And we know that even though we have challenges, the Lord has given us uh, solutions. Amen. To kind of overcome these challenges. So we have a beautiful lesson, a timely lesson on this evening. Again, we are in lesson nine. Uh, this would be for January 31st. The title of this week's lesson is sensitive to the Lord. Oh, boy, boy, boy. I, when I when I got to this lesson and I seen where we were falling at and, and the direction that our, our consecration month has been going and all the pieces of the puzzle just to me just seem to be falling in place. Amen. How many of us through this month can say that we are more sensitive to the Lord now than 30 days ago. Amen. Through fasting and through prayer and through meditation and through just dwelling and living in his presence, focusing more on him. It, we should have found ourselves in a place to where we can see him easier. We can hear him easier. And, and if, we're, can, if we're honest, we should be further along than where we were just a few short weeks ago. Amen. When you when you engage in spiritual warfare like that, I just truly believe that there is challenges and, and we're not going to, to say that, oh, it's been easy and there haven't been bumps in the road. But when we take on these challenges for our God, I just firmly believe that he rewards us as he promised. Amen. And so we know that it is worth it in the end. Amen. Uh, praise the Lord, brother Lipscomb. Amen. I see you joining us this evening. Praise the Lord, my brother. Praise the Lord, sister Swope. Amen. We have some faithful saints here on the Facebook page that are tuning in most every Friday. And even those that catch us later on, we thank the Lord for you. And we pray that something will be said and done that will encourage you as we transition. Amen. This is not the end, but it is the beginning. Amen. Uh, this week's lesson Again, sensitive to the Lord, our focus thought, it states that we must stay sensitive to God and his word. One more time, we must stay sensitive to God and his word. We've made progress this month, saints. We've made progress as individuals. We've made progress as a church family. And, and we need to make sure that we stay sensitive to God and his word. 
Let's not just because consecration month is over. Let's not just go back and give up all of the progress that we have made. Let's hold on to these practices, even though the schedule is going to be a challenge. Just day to day life can be challenging sometime. Let's hold on to this extra prayer time that we have carved out in this extra time of reading and meditation, the gains that we have made in the spirit. Let's not be so quick to go back to what we were doing before. Amen. And so, again, a very timely message. Our focus verse it's coming out of first Timothy and we're in chapter four and verse two. First Timothy, chapter four and verse two. And it says, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Oh, boy, we don't waste any time tonight jumping into the deep end of the pool. We're going to deal with that this evening. Amen. Our lesson text, the body comes from Acts chapter twenty eight. And we are focusing on verses 23 through 31. Um, and I'm going to try to read that in a timely fashion. Amen. Just so that we're all on the same page. And it reads. And when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him in his lodging to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the out of the prophets from morning till evening. And we're talking about Paul here. And some believe these things which were spoken and some believe not. Mm -mm -mm. How many can relate to that one? And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed. After that, Paul had spoken one word. Well, spake the Holy Ghost by Esaias, the prophet unto our fathers. Paul was using the book. Amen. Paul wasn't giving opinion. He was using the scriptures. Amen. Saying, go unto this people and say, hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand. And seeing ye shall see and not perceive. We're going to try to deal with that as well. For the heart of this people is wax gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes have closed lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. Amen. Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles and they will hear it. Amen. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had great reasoning among themselves and Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. And our cherry on top is we're going to close this out with first Timothy chapter four. and We're reading verses one and two here. Now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their consciousness seared with an iron. Amen. And so we see that that Paul dealt with a lot of the same situation that we deal with today. Um, there, there are some that we can witness to and we try to, to give them uh answers to their problems people out there are, are have issues their life is challenging um during these last days and times but not everybody is receptive to the help that is available for them amen and so paul dealt with some of those same mindsets now he went to the scriptures and that's important because whenever we're having conversations like this we need to make sure that we are not uh, leaning on our own thoughts and our own opinions, but that we are leaning on the word of God, because that word we know to always be true. Amen. Unfortunately, here it, it lets us know that some will hear and receive and others will not. Amen. Now, the spirit speaketh expressly 
The spirit was very clear and it plainly said that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines and devils. Uh, some people are, are, are going to just take notice to, to the other things that are out there, the other options, so to speak. And, and it's really unfortunate when some find themselves that at one point in time they walked with the Lord. And then they turn their back and they, they, they kind of uh, go another direction they, for whatever reason. They make a decision because at the end of the day, we know the Lord doesn't leave us. But he doesn't put shackles on us and keep us from leaving him. I've heard it said that the Lord will keep you if you want to be kept. And so what we're praying against is the mind of giving up, the mind of walking away, the mind of throwing in the towel. Because at the end of the day, we know that we receive the victory if we endure till the end. Amen. And so we want to encourage on this evening. Um, Brother Baylor, praise the Lord. We see you. Brother Redmond. Amen. Sister Robin. Amen. We see you. Praise the Lord to everyone who's joining in. Feel free. Feel free to jump in these comments. I'm going to try to keep up and we're going to try to balance this tonight. This is the first time I've actually tried to do it this way, um, but we're going to try to keep track and have this back and forth. Amen. We're going to dive into the culture connection here real quick, and, and we're going to try to touch on this a little bit. I believe this is very applicable on the overall theme and the thought for tonight. Amen. We have uh, the culture connection that states. Uh, 400 yards, 400 yards. And we have a gentleman named Johnny who was in a triathlon. Amen. And for those that don't know, a triathlon is a, is a sort of race, a sort of endurance race where you have a section of the race where you have to swim. You have a section of the race where you have to ride a bike a certain distance. In this particular case, Johnny had to ride 24.8 miles. Ooh, we, I agree with the commentator that just made me tired even reading that. Amen. And then he also had a section where he had to run 6.2 miles. Amen. Now, Johnny knew this race was coming up and Johnny trained for this race. And so at the start of the gun, Johnny took off. He was going. He attacked it like nobody's business. Amen. He was look, not looking around. He was focused. He was going down, taking care of his business. He knocked out the swimming portion, didn't look back, came to the cycling section. Again, Johnny knocked it out like, like it was nothing standing in his way. And then Johnny got to the run. Now, the run was the, the, the middle section. After riding for 24 miles, he only had to run six Amen. But Johnny ran into some problems. Johnny got all the way to the last hundred yards and Johnny started to slow down. Johnny started to show signs of trouble. The commentator says that 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 his head bobbled like a newborn baby's head. Johnny was struggling. He can barely keep it together. Amen. Johnny had a brother that happened to be in the race as well. He was in third place while Johnny was in first. Well, as Johnny started to slow, his brother came upon him and his brother ran up and pulled his arm around his own neck and basically helped carry Johnny over the finish line where he collapsed. Now, this is a situation where Johnny, he, he, he practiced, he trained for it, but he started off a little bit too exuberant. He started off exerting a little bit too much energy in the beginning. What Johnny failed to realize and focus on, it wasn't only how he started, but it was how he finished. Amen. So we have we have a parallel here. We have a couple of lessons here. Amen. That we can take away from this. Amen. That the enemy would like for us to 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 believe that uh, our past is still an anchor to come and get us. That, that, that we can't really be saved. We, we, we have done some things that we may be ashamed of. We may have done some things and said some things that only us and God know. Amen. But remember, it's not how you start. It's how you finish. Amen. And I also, on the other side of that coin, we have some saints that, that have been saved for many years. They've been living this life for longer than I've been alive. And amen, may the Lord continue to bless them and keep them. But if we all think hard, 
we can probably think of someone who lived this way for a large portion of their life. And before their race was done, they turned and walked away. That is a sad, sad place to be. And so we want to encourage if you've been in this way any amount of time. It's a marathon. This is a lifestyle. This is what we have now given ourselves to. I want to encourage those I've learned over my own life that if we have a back door and escape plan, oftentimes we're going to use it. Don't have an escape plan with salvation. Close that back door, board that bad boy up, put bricks in it. Don't give yourself the option of going back out into the world. It's just simply not worth it. Amen. And so we can see also here that Johnny had some help. Amen. The enemy would like us to believe that we are on islands all by ourselves now. Ah, he done he done kicked us outside of the walls of the church. Uh, Bishop mentioned on Wednesday night that it's been almost a year since we have had full fellowship inside of Zion. And, and many other churches have experienced that as well. Um, but we thank the Lord that even though the, the, the church services and coming together have been uh, there's roadblocks and speed bumps in our way that the Lord has still given us a platform to come together. We are not alone. You are not alone. You have brothers and sisters who love you, who care about you, who are depending on you and you depend on them. Amen. Let's make sure that we take the opportunity to encourage one another. We all need help at some point in time. If you're dealing with some things, don't deal with them sitting in there all by yourself. Amen. Reach out. Reach out. You have a brother or sister who will take time and converse with you. Ask the Lord to give you somebody to call and ask for help. And, 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 and not to mention, we all have a pastor. Amen. Let, let's not let's not think that that he's not concerned with our well-being. He is. Amen. Let's not allow the enemy to uh, allow us to feel embarrassed or less than because we may be struggling with, with some things. That's just a trick of the enemy. Amen. We know that we are not alone. We know it. We may not be able to reach out and hug and touch each other the way we did at once upon a time, but a phone call goes a long way. It goes a long way. You, if you're in that group of sending text messages, hey, send out a text, reach out and touch somebody. You'd be surprised that you might you might reach out and, and, and you might be looking for some to, for, for help from somebody. And the Lord may use you to encourage them. And both of you walk away blessed. Amen. Because that's just the kind of God we serve. Amen. So so let's not think uh, more highly of ourselves than we ought to, that that we shouldn't be struggling and we shouldn't have a hard time with things. We need each other. Amen. I need you. I, I and, and hey, I can't make it without you. Amen. So so amen. Praise the Lord. All of those still chiming in. Amen. Amen. Love to see the, the comments in the hearts. As we're dive down into our outline. Amen. We got Paul testified of the kingdom of God. Amen. How many get excited over Paul's uh, conversion in his ministry that that soon followed? Amen. He testified of the kingdom of God. Some believed. Some believed not. We must believe God's word. Now, I'm talking to those who are saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost and all of that. We must now some that we might witness to some are going to believe some may not believe, but we have to make sure that at the end of the day, we believe. Amen. We have Isaiah, the prophet. We went went back. I call it old school, the Old Testament. Amen. There's a lot of powerful things that are still relevant from the Old Testament. Amen. Here but not understand, see, but not perceive. And we must not let our hearts become dull. That's important. Bishop touched on that the other night as well. Amen. Sister Pat. Amen. God bless you. Sister uh, Evangelist Charlotte. Amen. God bless you. 
Uh, third outline is in the latter days, we will have a falling away. Amen. And it also says consciousness dulled because of sin. Boy, we, we have things to be cautious about nowadays, saints. We got things that we need to be uh, aware of. Amen. And we must stay sensitive to God and his word. Amen. 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 Um, diving into the outline, we're going to start with the, the first outline. Paul testified of the kingdom of God. Now we're picking this up right here. Um, in a little bit of a transition for all of my Bible scholars out there. We're going to drop some questions out here for you guys here in just a minute. Amen. But we're picking up here where the commentators talking about Acts 13, where we see a significant change in the narrative of Acts. In chapter 13, the story transitions from following Peter and the other disciples of Jesus to instead focus on, focusing on Paul's missionary journey to the Gentile world. Amen. And so there's a little bit of a shift. Paul becomes a main uh, character or main personality at, at the, the latter end of Acts. Amen. Um, we were first, of course, introduced to, to Paul as Saul. Amen. And, and he first showed up on the scene when he held the coat for Stephen's executioners in Acts 9. Amen. We know that he himself took up persecuting uh, the saints. He was persecuting the early church, hunting them out. Amen. He was on a mission to, to hunt them down when he had that faithful interaction with the Lord on that road to Damascus. Amen. And so we know that there was a there was a change here. Paul went from being uh, used of the enemy, we can say, to being used of God. And, and, and some might ask, and I often did, especially uh, when I first uh, got saved, I, I, I wondered, why did the Lord choose Paul? When, when you look at the authors of the New Testament uh, book, Paul is credited for writing a lot more than any other singular author. So why did why did the Lord allow Paul? And Paul was, he was hunting people down, imprisoning them overseeing, uh, uh, beating them and abusing them. And then one day, Paul had an encounter. Ooh. How many of you out there remember that day you had your encounter? <laughs> Amen. You may not have been hunting down and persecuting the church, but you was out there living any old kind of way, whether you realized you were living for the enemy or not. That's a whole nother conversation for a whole nother day. But one day the Lord showed up to you and you did not harden your heart. Boy, boy, boy. How many remember that day? How many? Let me see some hands of those that remember that day. I still get excited about it. It wasn't that many years ago, but boy, I don't know if that will ever get old. Amen. Th this motion, this, this time, this moment is crucial because we see a transformation in Paul. We see Paul take that same fervor, that same energy, that same dedication that he had in persecuting the saints. Paul doesn't lose his fervor. He doesn't lose his energy and his passion. But what he does do is he now changes it. He has another focus. And Paul took all of those things that made him great in persecuting the church. And he allowed the Lord to use those gifts and those tools that he had to further the kingdom. Amen. The Lord has given you some gifts. Amen. We're talking about consecration month. We're talking about being sensitive to the Lord. Amen. I know that some of you have been asking and seeking in the Lord and Lord, what are, is it that you would have me to do? Amen. Let's think about these things, right? We're using Paul as our analogy here. Paul used those same gifts, but now he was using them for the kingdom. Amen. Remember, remember, it's not how you start. It's how you finish. And this month we've been focusing on knowing that God has a plan for you. Amen. Hopefully some of us have some insight on, on now we know what God's plan is for our lives. Amen. We'll talk about that a little bit more. I don't want to get too ahead of myself here. Uh, Paul's travels. He, he went on some missionary journeys. He went 
uh, to a, a lot of different places, but he, he, he mainly went through the Greco Roman world and in each stop, his purpose was the same. He testified of the kingdom of God. At each stop, Paul would first begin preaching to the Jewish synagogues. I'm sure that there was some plotting in his mindset. I'm sure that that was strategic. Paul was an educated man. He, 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 I don't believe he wasted actions. Amen. And in each case, some of them would believe and others would not. And Paul didn't seem to get all broken up. What he did was after he preached to the Jews, he then went to the Gentiles in the city and preached the same life changing word to them. Amen. See, see, even now, uh, when, when, when especially when Bishop gets up and he preaches and we're watching him on the live stream. Bishop is preaching to the church. He's preaching. He, he, he's preaching to us. But he also preaches to those that are lost, all those that don't know the Lord like we do, those that that haven't been filled with his spirit. Amen. And so that offer is always out there for those that are looking for a change, those that might be looking for a new life. And that's what Paul, even in his actions, was a testimony to. Paul had a reputation. We know, right? Those of us that have been around for a little bit, Paul had a reputation. He wasn't necessarily uh, welcomed in with open arms. People heard about Paul, even if they never seen him, they heard about him and it wasn't good things. So let's not allow what somebody may have heard about you to deter you from doing what God has called you to do and to be. Amen. If Paul can do it, we can do it as well. Now, we have a question here from the commentator. It says, what does it mean to share the gospel with someone? We're going to try to exercise these comments here. What does it mean to you to exercise or to, to share the gospel with somebody? Let's jump in the comments there and kind of give us your explanation. Remember, you know, we're, we're talking not, not everybody that is watching is saved. And even some that are saved may still have some questions. And so it's, it's a help to be able to see and get a little bit of understanding and explanation from your brothers and sisters. Remember, we need each other. Amen. So don't hold back. Don't hold back your, your comment. You don't know who your comment may help and may bless. Amen. We're going to keep on moving right now. We're down in a where, where it says some believed in Antioch. Paul and Barnabas publicly presented the gospel to all who would hear the message. And as always, some believed while others rejected. Ooh, that just that just reminds me that just there, there was a time where uh, I would come and, and, and sit upstairs. And uh, the most uncomfortable part of service for me for, for several years was the altar call. <laughs> that that was the that was the most uncomfortable time. I enjoyed the choir. I enjoyed the preaching. But boy, that altar call just it did something made me squirm in a way that, boy, I just kind of wish I could get up and walk out, you know. But one day. One day I wanted to get up out of that seat and it wasn't to go for the back door <laughs> one day, boy, I couldn't get to the front fast enough. So let's not be discouraged when you present somebody with the gospel and they don't respond the very first time. You don't know if the next time that the Lord sends you to that person, that might be the time. That might be the time. So it's not for us to judge. Amen. Because there was a lot of altar calls. Now, I'm just speaking for myself. I can't speak for you guys, but there was a lot of altar calls that I, I refused to get up. But all it took was one. All it took was one. And the Lord had been dealing with me and boy, I was ready. Then wasn't nobody going to stop me. Couldn't nobody get in my way. It was it was a beautiful thing to finally see uh, Dr. Presley, Dr. Presley. She would always encourage. Uh, she was one of the saints that would always encourage. And I have such fond memories of, of of her spirit and how she would just say, you know, well, I'm just waiting for you. You know, you go, you're going to get saved one day. And she never criticized me. She never belittled me, but she encouraged. She let me know that she was praying for me. You know what? When I went up for prayer that day, the Lord allowed me to know that she was truly praying for me. I believe that with all of 
my heart. I believe that with all of my heart. And so don't allow the enemy to discourage you all who are out there witnessing. I see some jumping in here um, and giving us your comments. Don't 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 be discouraged just because uh, your neighbor that you've been witnessing to for the last 10 years still hasn't hasn't come on board. Don't don't be discouraged about that, because if we're honest, some of us, well, it took us a many a years and and who knows how many saints was praying for me. I, I mentioned Dr. Presley, but I know that there were more. I know that there were more saints calling our names out. Uh, uh, one of our brother, Brother Baylor, uh, almost every prayer meeting, Brother Baylor mentions his unsaved loved ones. And, and you all know, and, and it's not that none of us do. Uh, all of us have that same prayer, but he he actually goes to the time and take the effort to mention them. One day the Lord is going to answer that prayer and he's going to see his unsaved loved ones be saved. But we have to believe in God's word. Amen. We have to believe that word. Amen. So we're going to get back to the lesson and and where we're at here. We're in section a still um, and we're, we're, we're now talking about of who some of the who's. Amen. So as Paul and Barnabas were on this mission, some of their converts, um, the, the lesson describes them is were those who had been marginalized. And that just simply means those who have been put aside. Uh, maybe they've been overlooked, neglected and put down. Hmm. That should remind us of somebody. Who do we know that went after those that were put aside or neglected or or looked over? Who do we know that purposely went out? to minister to people like that. Amen. Let me see in the comments if you guys are picking up what I'm putting down. Amen. But Paul was not the first one to, to reach out to those that were looked over. Amen. And some of those are notable. We have Lydia, a woman from, I have a hard time with that word. Thyatira, you guys can correct me. I'm all good with that. We also have Aquila and Priscilla. Amen. These are some of the notable ones that Paul touched um, in his ministry. Amen. And so it, it goes to show us that um, the word was not just to save the Jews, but also the Gentiles. And oh, man, don't we owe the Lord a praise for that? How many are thankful and grateful for the Lord sending that word to us? Amen. Sister Pat, praise the Lord. Amen. Sister Over, amen. Thank you for your comments. We pray that they will be a blessing and help someone get a little bit of a better understanding of, of what we are talking about. Amen. Uh, see a few Sunday school teachers chiming in, helping. Amen. Once a teacher, always a teacher. Amen. Now, we're going to jump down a little bit. We're talking about uh, some of those that were marginalized is, is, is who he reached. Uh, but all in all, there was a common denominator of those who believed. And it wasn't their ethnicity, their social status or their biblical literacy. The commonality between them all was that they put their trust in the message that Paul was preaching about Christ which we know as the gospel and responded in faithful obedience. So ultimately it doesn't matter if, if you're from a little bit of a higher social standard, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're one of those that, that kind of feels like you have been uh, given the short stick and you've kind of been uh, overlooked it. God wants to save you too. Amen. And his gospel is just strong enough to do that thing. Amen. So we know those that have experienced this thing in real life nowadays and, and we all have our own testimonies. We know and that should be part of our message as we express to those that we know and love is I know because it happened to me. And if it happened to me, if he can pick me up, if he can turn me around, if he can take things out of my mouth and taste out of my mouth and, and give me uh, the ability to look and to see and hear from him and fill me with his spirit, then surely he can do that for you. Amen. In today's day and time, there's so much uncertainty. 
There's so much going on in our society. But there's one thing that we can put our trust in. Amen. We don't have to worry about who's the next president or who's the next mayor or any of these things of this supremacy and these the racism and it. put your faith and your trust in the Lord. His word is the same yesterday, today and forevermore. If you get tired of dealing with wishy washy this and that. People contradicting the Lord, grab a hold of that word like nobody's business and don't let go. Amen. Now, we want to again, we're, we're, we're trying to encourage here and and and, and also know, too. Um, and, and most of us know that if we've been uh, under under Bishop Reynolds for any amount of time, we have heard it at one point in time or another. When we go out and we live our life for the Lord and we are witnessing unto him when people uh, do not respond in an accepting fashion or manner, they're not rejecting us. They're rejecting him. Some people are just not going to believe they're just not at that place yet. And so we should not take it personal, but we should just be encouraged. We keep on going. And it says just as there were those who believed Paul's message, there were others who did not. More often, the ones that did not were Jews, the commentator throws in there. I, you know, amen, amen. We, we, can't, we can't be discouraged by those who don't. We just continue. We know that his word is true. We're going to stay sensitive to his word and we're going to carry it and bring it to all of those that the Lord will have us to bring it to, just as Paul did. Amen. So many of the unbelieving Jews, they say, manipulated the governmental powers of their Gentile societies in order to oppose the Christian movement. There were problems. We know that change, you know, we, just as, as, as human uh, beings and, and naturally uh, uh, changes can present certain challenges. And so there were those that were threatened uh, by the, this news. So there were those that were threatened uh, by this movement and, and they didn't want the change to take place. And so they were just they were looking out for themselves. They were looking out for, oh, well, this is the way we've always done it. And I don't want to do it differently. And so they they had opposition and they were they were not shy um, in, in, in letting other people know because they wanted more people to agree with them. Amen. Uh, one of the, uh, again, one of the things that we know we've been around, uh, we, we don't get into arguments with people over, over this. This is not this is not where we're going with that. We're not here to beat anybody over the head with it. it, it it's just we present them with the facts as is written. Amen. And, and, and when people are challenged and they're threatened, they're going to combat it. So just know, I mean, the enemy doesn't want us to reach any of the saved souls out there. The enemy doesn't want us to 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 get a hold of our unsaved family members and co-workers and neighbors and friends. No, the enemy doesn't want that. And he didn't want that back then either. And so he opposed them. Amen. In in the place of this contradiction. Amen. So now we're down to see where it says we must believe God's word. We must. We must. This is not a choice. This is this is this is wise word right here. We don't want to give the enemy any uh, cracks in the door to sneak in. Amen. We must believe in God's word. It says whether believers experience direct opposition to their faith by outspoken antagonists. Some of you may have experienced that or are being opposed indirectly by philosophies of the present world. It says they must remain faithful to God's word. We must you and me. We have to remain faithful to God's word. We must submit to the authority of the word of God. Amen. It says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Amen. We have to believe that. Believers must also allow God's word to have the final say. Sometimes we, it's correction, right? It, that means we get it wrong sometimes. <laughs> and that's okay. That's all right. We get it wrong sometimes. Sometimes we, we miss something. 
That's all right. We don't get it right all the time. Hey, dare I say we've been uh, pushing to get closer to the Lord this month. We, we faced opposition. We, we didn't conquer every challenge. We didn't avoid every confrontation. But. We must allow the word of God to correct us. Amen. And that may be uncomfortable sometimes. It says, how do you view those who do not believe God's word? Ooh. How do we view them? Mm, I know how we should view them. I know how we should view them. Let, let me see if you guys are in tune spiritually. How do we view or how do you view those who do not believe God's word? Let, let's get in the comment section and, and, and help some of those out that may be questioning and have those questions. I, I learned something in school. Many of you have, too, is that we, you have a question. And, and, and you don't want to ask your question because you don't want everybody to know that you didn't know. But oftentimes somebody else will ask and then you're grateful that they asked because now you get your question answered without having to ask it. Amen. That doesn't change a whole lot. Even as adults, it may even get a little bit trickier sometime. So let's go ahead and put it in there. Maybe somebody who, who doesn't know how to ask that question. And so we want to put in there in the comments as they watch this, they can look at these comments and they can get their question answered without the embarrassment. Amen. So let's let's help out and be helpers one to another. Amen. We're running. Boy, this lesson has so much in it. Oh, the time is just escaping by. We're going to try to 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 pick some highlights here as we go through uh, this next this next half of the lesson. Amen. Um, so we're, we're talking about real quick. We're in, in, in Roman numeral two. And thank you, Sister Pat. Thank you, Brother Baylor. Thank you, uh, Brother Redmond, for commenting in. Brother Kenny. Amen. I see you. Amen. Thank you all for your input. Uh, we pray that your comments will be helpful and a blessing to some um, that are watching. Uh, we're talking about Isaiah. And and it's one of these things that that we have to. Again, we're, we're talking about being sensitive to the Lord. Amen. So Paul is on assignment and, and he's going out to do what he was called to do. And so one of the things that Paul does is he, he reaches for the scriptures. Amen. And so uh, we're talking about how he's taking a, a section of scripture from Isaiah and he's applying it to his current situation in his time. And so he's he's taking this and he's applying it to himself. He's applying it to the people of the day and he's using that as his inspiration and his direction. Amen. And so uh, go and tell this people. Amen. Now, now uh, this is where, again, uh, we need to have a relationship with the Lord. We need to be sensitive to the Lord so that we know how and when to apply the scripture to our lives when we're looking for direction, when we're looking for an answer. Amen. We have to have a relationship with God and not not a superficial relationship, a real relationship. Amen. Where we can hear him and we can feel his presence. And we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is what the Lord is asking or telling me to do. Amen. And so uh, Paul takes it and he's going and he's telling this people. Amen. Now, in this particular instance, uh, oftentimes his going and telling this people ended up. The, the commentator says the narrative ends with the judgment against the Jews. A lot of them did not want to receive. But Paul's ministry in Rome continued in boldness. And without hindrance, which was something Paul had never experienced in all of his travels. Amen. We're going to jump down now into uh, real quick um, here, but not understand. And I'm going to try to, again, touch on just some of these highlights. There's so much in here. There's so much in here um, that we want to try to get get out. And again, we're, we're looking to to try to be an encouraging uh, encouragement to, to, to the saints on tonight um, and even encourage those that that may not be saved that if, if you've been pondering uh, giving your life to the Lord, there is no time like the present. Amen. There is no time like right now. 
Amen. Make that decision. You will not regret it. Give yourself to the Lord. Amen. This is a, 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 about the time of year uh, that I got saved. And, and I did not know at the time I, I got saved in February and I didn't know that the saints had just come out of consecration month and had been fasting and praying. But boy, I tell you, uh, once the Lord filled me, you talk about fire up in this place. Amen. 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 Boy, how we miss uh, being able to come together with the saints. Amen. And so we know um, that some will hear you. Um, the people we talk to, we know that they, they'll, they'll hear you. But, but just because they're hearing you doesn't mean that they understand. And, and again, we have to remember not all of us um, were, were born in church and, and grew up in church. And, and there's even challenges for those that, that are in that situation. Um, but there's a certain amount of uncertainty that, that unbelievers do have. And, and it's not for, again, for you to, to call somebody necessarily wrong and to, you know, uh, tell them, oh, yeah, if you don't do this, you're going to hell. No, 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 no. We need to have some compassion because we wanted someone to have compassion with us. Amen. So it says, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. Amen. So we need to have compassion when we are witnessing, when we are looking at those that we love that don't know the truth and had their eyes haven't yet been opened the way our eyes have been. Amen. So let's make sure that we are coming from a place of love and compassion. Amen. Um, we're going to keep moving along here. We're in B where it says C, uh, but not perceive. Boy, boy, boy. It's one thing to be able to see and another thing to be able to perceive the will and the word of God. It's another thing when you're reading the word as a book um, and, 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 and we're just looking at words on a page. But when you start to perceive, when you start to, to receive, when the Lord starts to open up your eyes, those words will jump off of that page and they'll, they'll paint pictures for your mind. They will give you the ability to see things that you, you just can't see with your normal eye. Amen. And so that's what we're striving for is to get to that place. That's where we want those that we are witnessing to those that we are preaching the gospel to, to get to that place. Amen. Uh, says we must not let our hearts become dulled. Amen. This this is important here. It, it can be a, a, a test um, of the will over the years to to year in and year out uh, to try to um, forsake the things of this world and to give yourself wholly to the Lord. Um, but, but, but it says we must not let our hearts become dulled. We must not let our hearts become dulled. Um, Bishop was talking on Wednesday night. And if you haven't seen that video, uh, I encourage any of you who haven't seen it to go back on the Facebook page. Um, Wednesday night, uh, Bishop gave us a recap over our, our focus for this month's Bible studies. And also, I believe on YouTube, you can look on the Zion Temple YouTube channel and, and see that video. And one of the things that he brought up, it says, I must labor to heighten my spiritual alertness. There are some things I must do. We have to work out our salvation through fear and trembling. We can't just sit back on our laurels and, and I, I've done it and, and I don't have to do it anymore. I, I did my time, I served my time. No, 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 no. We are in this thing, we are in this thing, we are in this thing until the end, amen. And so if the Lord still has you among us, then there is still a work for you to do, amen. There is still someone for you to reach, someone for you to encourage, amen. And, and you can't do that if you're dull. If your heart has kind of become rounded off and hardened off earlier in the in the lesson, the commentator talked about uh, cauterizing a wound. And, and that's an old battlefield term uh, where they would take a, a, a hot object and, and put it onto a bleeding wound. And ultimately it was um, burning and searing the flesh to stop the bleeding. And so ultimately to try to repair one wound, I got to give you another wound. But when you do that and, and you experience that, what happens is now that area becomes desensitized. And that's what we're trying to avoid against is we're trying to stay sensitive to the word and the voice of the Lord. 
Amen. And so we must not become dull. We have to fight against that thing. Um, uh, Bishop even brought up the other night how, you know, we don't oftentimes like to talk about it. Yeah, that that old man died. However many years ago, that old woman died. However many years ago for you personally. But that don't mean that we don't have to keep that rascal in the ground. That thing wants to wake back up and stick a hand up, stick a foot up, maybe maybe use that. That old voice might want to raise up in you. You know, somebody push those buttons a certain kind of way and and, 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 and it kind of catch you by surprise. And you almost feel yourself responding in a way that you may have responded before the Lord filled you. And so we have to stay on guard. We have to stay on post. We can't allow ourselves to be rocking to sleep and to be complacent with where we are. So that's why we continue striving to get closer to God. We continue uh, dwelling and re reading his word and spending time in worship and, and meditating on those words that he has given us that we might be able to keep ourselves ready and prepared. Amen. Because at the end of the day, who, who doesn't want to hear it? Amen. At the end of the day, who doesn't want to hear it? What, what's that scripture that we all lo would love to hear at the end of our race? I I'm not going to say it. I want to see if you guys are, are following along with me. What's that scripture that we want to hear when it's all said and done? Amen. My, see, my Bible readers, where are you guys at? Amen. What do we want to hear? What are we trying to strive for? It all comes together at the end with a simple phrase. What are we hoping to hear the Lord say to us on that great day? Amen. Uh, we're in three right now. We only got a couple minutes left real quick. It says many believers rejoice in knowing this life is not the end. Boy, 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 boy. Just take a pause for a second right there. There is something much better than this. Amen. We should be looking with excitement. We should be looking with anticipation. Amen. There you go, sis. All right. I see you guys chiming in. There we go. We have some of you guys are picking up what we're putting down. Amen. That's what we are looking to hear. That well done. That good and faithful servant. Well done. Well done. Well done. How, how many want to hear you almost made it, but you was that close and oops. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Many of you know that that um, they got the TM camp and we're going to try to wrap it up with this. Um, my daughter went a few years ago and one of the drills that they had was they had a rapture drill where they didn't advertise it. They just told you the, 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 the horn is going to go and you have this much time to get into the safe place. But they also gave you something so you, you couldn't just get in without the something they gave you. But even if you had the something they gave you, and you didn't get in. That didn't count either. Oh, boy, when she came home and testified about that, you talking about a reality check. How many want to miss that day? I don't know. Ain't no hands going up now. So let, let's keep that in mind. Amen. That we are in this for something. Amen. Uh, we want to go ahead and try to close uh, real quick. It is, it's just been a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to come and, and enjoy this time with you all on this evening. Um, it is a beautiful message. We thank everybody for chiming in, for, for giving us your comment. Believe you me, I truly believe that when someone goes back and watches the video and even has been watching right now, I pray that all of our comments and our answers and our input will, will help and bless someone. I personally know I don't have all the answers. Amen. It's a team effort and, and we, we, we need each other, saints. So we're trying to bring forth... Um, uh, interactive opportunity. Amen. To let everybody know that that we miss you. Uh, we're definitely still praying for each and every one of you. I pray that you all are praying for me and my home as well. And we are looking forward to this Sunday. Amen. Looking forward to that dynamic word. I know uh, the end of consecration always just brings uh, something extra special. And so we're, we're inviting everybody to come back on this Sunday for our AM worship at 12 noon on the Facebook live channel and, and come hungry and with the desire to see what the Lord has in store for us. 
and then even something special on Sunday evening for all the, the, the members of Zion, all the Zion saints. Amen. M many of you, most of you probably already got the text on today. And so we're looking forward to that Zion, uh, that all Zion Zoom meeting on Sunday evening. Amen. So let's not forget that as well. Amen. And then we also have on Monday, uh, we have our uh, Monday uh, evening prayer call at 6 p.m. Uh, that that is our unity prayer. Um, we get together every Monday and, and everybody calls in and, and we are able to bring our prayer request forth and we will have a prayer leader on that day. And, and, and maybe we can get some prayer requests in and we can all go before the Lord in prayer and unity. And that number for that prayer call is area code 605-313-4166. And the access code is one zero zero one zero six. Amen. And then always uh, on Wednesday evening at 6 p.m., we can look forward to our Bible class with our very own Bishop Reynolds. And, and he's going to, I'm sure, just continue uh, to, to be on that ministry and to be able to to give us the word in a, in a little bit of a different platform where we're able to sit down and follow along with our Bibles and see for ourselves. I thank the Lord for a pastor who encourages us to, to read, our, read the word for ourselves. Amen. And so that's Wednesday at 6 p.m. And of course, next Friday, right back here at 6 p.m. for our Sunday school lesson. Amen. We are looking and, uh, and thanking the Lord for all of you who have tuned in. Um, we do want to encourage those um, who, who may not know to um, uh, be able to give in the GiveLify. Amen. Uh, GiveLify. Um, that's one of our digital platforms for online giving. Amen. And so uh, please sow a seed. Amen. And you can find uh, us on Givelify if you download the app, Zion Temple Apostolic Church. It'll be real easy. Once you download that and look the church up, you'll see a picture of our pastor right there. It does offer you uh, many, many tabs that you can select on how and where you want to give. Um, if you're not on Givelify, you can always use the cash app. And that um, uh, username or sign in is dollar sign Z I O N T A C. That's dollar sign Z I O N T A C for the Cash App. And then last but not least, we have Zelle, which is uh, Zion T A C at Comcast.net. Um, I do know that my credit union uh, currently also uh, affiliated with Zelle, so I can actually go to my uh, credit union app and, and just send the money um, through Zelle. It's real convenient. It's a secure way of payment, and it's just another way that we can be a blessing unto this ministry. Amen. Um, also, keep in mind, we're here on Facebook right now. But but we know that uh, Zion Temple has a Facebook, uh, a YouTube channel as well. Amen. So look us up on YouTube. All right. Look us up. Um, the, the ministry here will put the uploads on YouTube uh, shortly after they are they are live and, and wrapped up on Facebook. Um, normally, it's later the same day at the very latest the next day. But but if you hit once you subscribe, hit that notification bell. And that will let you know you'll get that alert whenever the new upload is put on. Amen. And so, again, it's just another way that we can share the, this wonderful gospel of Jesus. Amen. And, and, and be able to help and to get this information out in a way that's tangible to those that we love and care about. Amen. So if you haven't done so already, share this video from tonight. Um, let's go ahead and boost it and try to reach as many as the Lord would have us to reach. Amen. So that being said, we're going to go ahead and wrap up. We want to do want to close in a word of prayer. Amen. And so I, I just ask you to pray with us as we close. Let's look to the Lord. Heavenly Father, my God, we thank you, Father, my God, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for this moment, Lord, this ministerial moment, Lord, my God. We pray, Lord, Father, my God, that your will was done. We ask you, Lord, my God, to continue to move this word, Lord, in each and every vessel, Lord, that received it, Father, my God. Use it, Lord, my God, to lead them, direct them, Lord, encourage someone, Lord, my God. Hallelujah. Even save someone, Lord, my God. We're asking, Father, my God, for you to continue, Lord, my God. 
God, to grow the church as you see fit, my God, to build us up, Lord, my God, in your faith, in the faith of you, Father, my God. We ask you, Lord, to continue to use Zion, Lord, my God, to be the saving station that it has been down through the years, Father. We thank you, Lord, my God, for how you've just kept us, Lord, throughout this year, Father, my God, through the challenges and the tests, my God, hallelujah, Lord, my God, and not only just kept us, Lord, my God, oh, but you've been blessing us, Lord, my God, along the way, Father, hallelujah, we thank you, Lord, my God, for even that, my God, that in this day and time, Lord, my God, you see fit, Lord, to bless your people, Father, we're asking you, Lord, to, to help us, Lord, my God, to hold on to, to that word, Lord, hold on to the gains that we have made throughout this month, Lord, my God, and even to be encouraged, Lord, on those that may not have received an answer to their prayer, Lord, that we are going to thank you and praise you, Lord, for we know that the answer is on the way, Lord, my God. Hallelujah. Continue to use this platform, Lord, my God, to reach your people, Lord, and even to reach those that may be lost, Father, that they will hear your word, Lord, my God, and harden not their heart, my God, that they will come forward wanting to give their lives over to you, Father, my God, and we're going to praise you for it. Hallelujah. And we consider those things done in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. And for anybody who uh, might have a desire uh, uh, to be saved. And if you want to be saved, if you if you if you want to be baptized in Jesus name uh, for the remission of your sins, please reach out. You can call the church uh, right down here to the church. It's, the number is 219-883-8831. And, and our pastor has uh, put out on the different videos, uh, leave a message um, explaining who you are and what it is that you are looking to do. And someone will be back with you to help you in this Christian journey. Amen. And so we pray that you take advantage of that opportunity. And even though there may be a pandemic, amen, there will be someone to help you. Amen. To, to, to be able to, to get going on the, the path of righteousness for Jesus name. Amen. And so we thank everyone again for tuning in with us. We look forward to seeing you all uh, Sunday morning, morning worship, and then look forward to that Zoom meeting uh, with the saints of God on Sunday evening. Amen. So look for that text. Uh, will give us further direction. And, and we pray that everyone will have a blessed evening. Amen. Amen. And God bless.